you're listening to the Board Game Snobs podcast, a ridiculous podcast with ridiculous hosts that discuss ridiculous things. And any mention of board games is purely coincidental. And so, without further ado, and with a heavy dollop of shame and embarrassment on my part, I give you the Board Game Snobs. <laughs> Welcome to the podcast. This is Jerry, who's always here and wonderful and looking forward to hearing from you all. This is Gabby. I'm here all the time as well, and I'm also wonderful, and I also look forward to hearing from you all. And this is Enrique. I'm back once again for this podcast. Why are you coming in so enthusiastic? Because I love you all. Your arms are literally raised in the air. That's unusual. Well, good thing they can't see that. They cannot see that, but, but I explained it to them. We're, we're not a visual medium. We're reco- You're not medium. You're very visual large. <laughs> uh, I knew you was going there before you even went there. Where? Visual maximum. Go ahead. Listen. I am listening. Go ahead. I'm listening. Listening. We're recording from Plan B. This is our this is our secondary location. Our satellite location. Yes, this is my office. BGS Satellite Studios. It's pretty cool having two offices. That's nice. I appreciate coming here and having uh, access to your games that you don't bring over. This post human I see over here. Oh, that's yeah, I, I walked in here and I'm like, oh my god, there's just there's Legos, there's nice. Nerf guns, there's it's quite gaming a child's computers. paradise. I know, right? This is what you've never been here till today. Yeah, I've never like, been to my new residence. <laughs> we ate nachos. And drank scotch. You can't be mad at Gabby for not having nachos on the podcast. And played okay. Clash of Cultures. Oh, yeah. And you got to see my dogs. Yeah, the little my runts. My border collies. Those little runts. We played cornhole. Yeah. You had your first cornhole experience today. Yeah, official corn, cornhole. We discovered that Enrique is a cornhole savant. And more, it's all right. It wasn't you the best. Beat Gobby. You're quite the cornhole connoisseur. And you a cornoisseur, if you will. You beat Gobby, who is a cornhole master. I didn't know that. What He's a master you? holer. I'm you? I'm fairly good. Okay. Cornhole. But Enrique was like, after like 12 tosses, and like every third toss was in the hole. I am cornhole. <laughs> Classic. Which must be said, at least by someone, every cornhole tournament. I am cornhole. Back for TP for my book hole. Cornhole. Uh, now, now, whatever happened to them? Did they just stop? No. Making... Are, are you kidding me? They came back, right? They had a revision, and it's wonderful. I've never watched it's it. It's glorious. The movie is quite possibly one of the hilar- most hilarious movies of last year. Really? It is hilarious. Wow. And I'm a... not a Beavis and Butthead guy. Oh, growing yeah, up. Yeah, you look like it. No, growing, growing up. Shut up, butthead. Growing up, I didn't like them. Really? But in post adulthood, post adulthood, <laughs> post teenagehood, <laughs> they're quite hilarious. Really? Just like it's so stupid the stuff they laugh at. It's 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 funny. It's funny stuff. Oh, well, I'm a re- fan. Real like King of the Hill. Huge King of the Hill fan. King of the Hill's good too. Bobby. Well, it's the same guy, right? Mike Judge, Bobby, or Greg Daniels, one yeah, of them guys. Yeah, yeah, it's Greg. Yeah. Both of them. Yeah. I'll tell you. Isn't what. that also the office guy? No. Greg Daniels? I think it is. That was uh what's his face? Um man, I'm blanking. Not the British guy. Yeah, not the British guy. Well, well I'm talking about the guy that brought it to America. Oh, I don't know. He's one of those Greg Daniels or Mike it Judge. It may have been. Mike Judge. Mike Judge hilarious. Either ways. Uh Ricky, wait, put that down, please, before you shoot yourself with my nerf gun. No, you're it's fine. Don't worry about it. Did you ever wonder who first thought of bread knives? Bread knives? Yeah. Like knives to cut bread with? With the little serrated edges? That go Correct. <laughs> Somebody who was trying to cut bread with unserrated knives, I guess. 
The bread knife was invented by a Syracuse, New York resident named Joseph Burns in 1919. You know, I would think <laughs> for the millennia that bread has been around, they would have tried to put forth a little more effort into cutting it as opposed to just like, you know, a hundred years ago. Someone's like, hey, we should come up with a device to cut this stuff. Well, you know, people come They've up- They've been serving bread since early, early ages of mankind. Oh, well, before you start throwing well, they shade- cut it with a sharp rock? Before you start- They had knives, but they didn't have an actual knife devoted to bread. Reportedly, inspiration struck while he was using a scallop-edged glass cutting tool. Well, I don't know what that means. Scallops? Wonderful. Love them on steak. No, Burn. wait. Shallops. That's shallots? Shallops. There's scallops and then there's shallots. I get them confused all the time. Bur- Burns serrated bread knife made it possible to slice loaves of bread without significant tearing or squishing. His design was also able to cut cleanly in both directions. Mm-hmm. So this way and that way. Much like a saw. Remember the saws that, you know, like you get on both ends of it. You have two guys. And like, yeah, for, for lumber, yeah. Seems like, I mean, those have been around a while. Seems like somebody said, hey, let's put one of those on bread. How long has those lemon squeezers been around? I haven't looked that up. I had to look it up. Well, I'm just saying, you're sh- throwing a lot of shade, acting like people are not inventing things at a rapid pace. Burns' invention arrived approximately 10 years before the invention of the first whole loaf bread slicing machine. Although sliced bread is now easily accessible, many people still purchase or bake unsliced loaves that need cutting, and Burns' invention is considered a kitchen necessity today. Do you have a bread knife in your kitchen? Uh, I think I do, yes. This is kind of weird looking. We have a bread knife. So here's my thing. Do you bake this bread? Is issue I, I have before. Yes. You have? Yes. What kind? Uh, sourdough, mostly. No, you don't. Yes. You're making this up. No. I make, I make Irish soda bread. I've never had any. Well, I'll make some. But you don't really have to cut it like that. It, it, it comes out in like a, like a big un... It's not like you're not making slices for bread. You're just tearing it off. And well, right, it. right. And see, I actually like tearing the bread. I do, too. I like to tear bread. But here's my thing. Uh, I like so, to break bread. I like breaking bread. I like to so. break it. So here's the thing. Breaking bread. You bad. often hear people say the greatest thing since sliced bread, right? Why not the greatest thing since the knife that slices bread? Well, because without the knife that slices bread, they probably would have never thought about, hey, if we had a bunch of those in a row, we could just slice this bread. So really, the bread that slices knife is the device we should be saying, hey, this is the greatest thing since the knife that slices bread that Joseph Burns invented a hundred years ago. No, what we sh- that's goofy, because then we would just have to update that saying like every year when the next greatest invention come out. Like, that's the greatest thing since chemo. That's the greatest thing since penicillin. We've come up with one saying. That should be the case, because it's the greatest thing since what? Okay, what's the... The the previous greatest thing of all time? What is the greatest thing? Or the most recent greatest thing? What is the most recent greatest thing right now to you? Enrique, the most recent greatest thing. First great thing that pops into your mind. Probably some app. A, a Chat recent? GTP. That's the first thing that came to my mind. ASMR. Which, that's been around forever. Chat GTP. That's the first thing that came to my mind. the greatest thing since Jet Chat. Chad. Chad. G, Chad's GBA. Yeah, Chad's MBA. <laughs> Chad's MBA. My dad's a lawyer. <laughs> my name's Chad. He <laughs> drinks monster. My grade point average is 2.0. Drinks monster in drinks and punches <laughs> holes like, in the wall. We're messaging Chad. Tell us a story about <laughs> I keep, te- I keep texting Chad Elkins, so could you please re- <laughs> rephrase this, this email for me? No wonder he never... Tell me a story about GTA, Grand Theft Auto. This is Chad's GTA. If your name is Chad, you probably have GTA we on We pick your on Chad's quite a bit. Because Chad's deserve Hanging it. Chad's. Oh, Chad Chesson. Chad Chesson. And now a hard merge into board games. Wiz Kids was so nice to send us a review copy of the monumental edition of Clash of Cultures. Full disclosure. What? Full disclosure. This is a review copy we got in the mail. We will not be charging for positive reviews. Go ahead. Wow. You're coming out. I, I'm just saying. 
You're just coming out hard I'm there. Just, I so. just made a comment. Okay, yeah, I know you made a comment. I heard it. It was vague. It was very vague. It wasn't pointed at anything in particular. It sounds like you just trying to point it towards somebody. I, I only say it. Okay, so anyways, <laughs> Class of Cultures by WizKids. Now, first off, we did one of the most harshest reviews ever of a game that we said was probably one of the worst games we had ever played. Star Trek Conflict? Conflict. Yes, by WizKids. And I... They sent us that review copy, and then we did a review saying it was the absolute worst thing ever. You know what that tells me? They have integrity. They didn't listen to our review. Also that. So... (laughs) Uh, They're like, who are we sending this to? I don't know. know. They're on our list, though. They're not. You should check that. Ah, don't worry about it. Just send them out to them. They're nominated for the Golden Gate. (laughs) They must be legit. They must be. And then they they, they, they listen to the podcast where it's all bad, Bob. I love classic cultures. (laughs) We're down here in Louisiana. We got a lot of culture down here. If there's one thing I like, it's culture. I tell you what, we used to go on over to the bowlerino at night. <laughs> play some cornhole. You go. You there. would think you'd go bowling there, but no, you play cornhole there. It's kind of ironic. They got cornhole in the back, baby. Wait till after 10, they turn the neon lights on. <laughs> they turn the neon lights on and the pins, they glow. <laughs> the pins glow. The harder you hit them, the harder they glow. Barbara works at the stack counter. <laughs> If you can get past all the cigarette smoke, it's a pretty nice place to play. They make good french fried taters. <laughs> yeah, they make some real good french fried taters. Put some mustard on it. You don't stick your hand in that receiver. Look at it. I bought a 212 there one time. <laughs> they got a real nice cabinet pole position. I ain't played pole position in a long time. I spy you. Hunter. You ever played Spy Hunter? You remember Spy Hunter, Gary? I remember Spy Hunter. I didn't really like game. it. That's a good game. Spy Hunter, Pole Position, Galaga. I lost all my money at that claw machine. <laughs> all that claw machine, I can kill you. I spent four dollars trying to get one of them bears. <laughs> I think we may have lost our way on a Clash of Culture <clears throat> discussion. <sighs> Give me a second. <sighs> okay. Phenomenal. So, um, uh, so thank you, Whiskey, for sending us this game. Um, for sending us this game, which is nice. Somebody at Whiskey's if they're like, we've made a huge mistake. It's well, no. For instance, Clash of Cultures is a Civ game, like a 4X game. Which, if you would ask me to say what the 4X means, please look it up right now because I am blanking. Exterminate, exploit, exterminate. exterminate. <laughs> Ex- exterminate. <laughs> Stop. What is that Billy Bob doing with the stuff? The what are they called? Daleks. Dalek. I'm a Dalek. Exterminate. That plunger you missed. <laughs> I'm gonna finish shoot you with my plunger. Exterminate. David Tennis the best doctor if you ask me. <laughs> oh. Okay, what? listen. Exploration. Listen. <laughs> Exterminate. <laughs> Exploit. <coughs> Explore and expand. There it is. There it is. So, I, I, first off, I don't know where to start with this. Well, well, first off, I'll just start here. Number one, this is the Monumental Edition. It's got the all the expansions in it. It's a great production. It has great artwork. All the components are really nice. It's got all the little plastic pieces in there. It's it, mm-hmm. You're... Quintessential, uh, I say quintessential. The monumental. Monumental. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Dudes on a map game. This, to me, was like Barony on steroids. Like It's like Barony's a simple, classic, very clear, straightforward. This was the, let's play for four hours and have a big battle and really develop a culture. And I remember at one point when we were playing this game, I said, this was what I wanted from Scythe. Like, I wanted something that felt like I'm building up and it was a very tight game even though Enrique kind of pr- played rather inefficiently and sometimes and it it ramps up like it we played the basic version of it where there was only six ages the first age was like positioning you know you miss moving around second age we're kind of getting things going by the third age our engine is moving and then you know by the fifth sixth stage we're fighting we're tearing it up and then the game is over just right on time I really enjoyed this game uh, more than what I thought I would. Matter of fact, the rule book was really well written. 
I didn't watch any videos on this. I had one question regarding movement that kind of bothered me a little bit that I got on the forums and read up about and realized it was more just my poor understanding of it. Um, it's a beast to set up, but if you don't mind that, I think this is my favorite Civ game. I want to play Mosaic at BGG to compare them. I know they're completely different, but when I think of games like Mare Nostrum... Nations? Uh... That's 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 your uh, present favorite Civ game that you tout. Would Nations be a Civ game? Because it's not like a map. When no, I think of a that's, Civ that, game, that is something. I think of like that game up there, the Civilization New Dawn. Not er, Nations, yeah, the card I, game. I know, but not Nations, the card game. Well, it is you a card game. Well, yeah, but but whenever through the ages, the quintessential, which is a card say, game. It's not uh, quintessential. Civilization game I wouldn't gets say discussed. It. You always say Nations is better. Okay, it's not so a Civ if, game. Oh, oh, well, uh, okay, so I would... Uh, You're wrong. Well, this has the whole thing of actual area control or area majority or whatever this game is. This is actually control. Right. You're fighting. Right. So there's violence. I feel like there is there is more of that in... There is that in this game, whereas there's not in Nations. Nations is you're just... You're kind of just running up tracks in nations. Literally. There is battle, but not really. You're not putting people on a hex fighting each other. You're just going to a spot on a card that says battle or on the player main board. Yeah, yeah. So in that regards, uh, even Rurik in that regards, this kind of gave me some Rurik vibes. It kind of gave me some Scythe vibes as far as the... Upgrading your uh, player board there with your civilization. So you have all these technologies on your personal player board that you can increase with these advancements. Which are very much like that. Which it's kind of weird that to advance your technologies just requires food. Well, that's you got to feed your <laughs> you scientists. You got to feed your people. We that's, need a rocket. Do you uh, understand, though, that, that food. Do you understand that that's literally what produce science, right? Feed your people. No, you understand that, though, right? Go ahead, You need to know. Okay. I don't even know where to begin with this. But if you go back in time, a thousand calories worth of work produced a thousand calories worth of food. Okay? There was no agriculture. It was just you go out, you gather, and you hunt. And generally, however much you expended, that's what you got back. Okay. So, So it wasn't until the agricultural revolution... To where you had one person could now feed four people. So one dude could literally go out and farm and feed himself and three other people, which allowed artists and scientists and every other people in the community to sit and think. Instead of just uh, working to produce food, they were able to get food from someone else and do their art. Right. So essentially, that's where all influencers, all advancement comes from. So this is a game of influencers. Essentially, if you can feed your people and have enough people that can sit and think, something good happens. That's basically the, the, the story of the world ever. The more people that you can put on the back burner and let them think and allow your smart people not to be toiling, doing something, trying to scrape by and survive, that's where you get... Because when you think about it, if you work a 40-hour week... Just now, you got time for nothing. Think of what you could do. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like that's that's because <clears throat> like now that I work a full schedule, eight thirty to five thirty every day, a very strict scheduled existence. Now, yeah, I don't have time for the things I used to enjoy more. But yet, we feed you so much. I, you I produce this podcast. That's true. Imagine In my very limited spare time. And imagine if you didn't limited. have a job. What, what you could do. do? What could I do? I would love to know. But like someone like Enrique. Support our Patreon, boardgamestops.com. She doesn't do anything. Enrique, what do you do in your spare time to uh, promote humanity? To, pro- to promote humanity? No. Yeah. What I don't, are I don't, you bringing to the community? I don't bring anything to the community. Wow. Well, well, and like, how does that well, make no, you feel? No, I guess. Well, no. If you were to, to think about your role in society, what do you think? My only role for instance, in my community. I am a healthcare hero. Jerry's a healthcare hero. A hero just in general. I used to deliver. <laughs> I used to deliver goods from one place to another. Now I accept your claims for basically 
complaints. You fix dents. I fix I, dents. Okay, well, but no, you it, send people to well, fix it, dents. I will send them out. And go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, is this what we're gonna send the whiz kids? Whiz kids, clash of cultures. I really enjoyed it. Monumental edition. Uh, I really enjoyed this game. Really, you won it. Yeah, surprisingly. I was not surprised. You played. Now, I am surprised that you trusted me enough to let me negotiate with you and then attack you. I knew, but I said it as I knew it. But I want to point out that I did give you money afterwards. I that traded. is true, unlike Enrique. Okay, so here's huh? the thing I, I discovered about, the, not discovered, it's like any other game, especially at three player. How many does this go up to? Do you know? I believe four. Four. Okay. I would say four is probably fine. Don't it probably wouldn't it be much down. more longer than what we played at. I would say a fourth player probably would add an hour onto this game. No, no, no. So it, it it's thirty minutes. It, it's two to four players. Move your thumb there. One hundred and eighty minutes. One hundred and eighty minutes. That's, that's three, hours. three hours. Yeah, it we was played three about hours. three hours. It was three hours. But that was a learning game. Three of us. I would say a fourth player. Once you know it, you know it. I, I, okay. Three player, four player. But here's the thing. This, this is the issue with every one of these style games. And I, it's not even an issue. It's a feature. I was attacked by Enrique. I was attacked by Jerry. One time. Jerry and Enrique never attacked each other. You threatened me. But that's not the point. And you were defenseless. But that's not the point. Soft underbelly. However, Basically. I turned that attack from Enrique into an advantage because I built up my army back up and then I attacked him right back. And unbeknownst to me, <laughs> I had these cards in my hand that actually gave me victory points based on my victory. And I was like, oh, crap, I can play that now. Oh, crap, I can play that now. These objectives you get when you play Vic, when you, I, I was a rewarded for my aggressiveness. Correct. Which I wouldn't have been. As we all know. Is the fact of life, which I which I wouldn't have otherwise been had I not been attacked, because attacking is not my modus operandi operandi normally. Why are you speaking Greek? I love Latin. What can I say? Mm. E pluribus unum. Tell to too many, there's one. Tiki tiki. Mini parsons. Mini parsons. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you've got weighed, and you weigh more than one. Is that what that means? Uh. So. Despite that fact that I was being attacked from both fronts, I still main I, I managed to come out with a victory. Uh, but with a fourth person, I think it might balance that part out a little bit. I would say, yeah, two the four two or four players. I think this game would shine. How can you have two fronts? Uh, you have a front, front or a back. I was a northern front and a southern front. I don't like that phrase. You attacked him behind from the sea, so I got you from then- the back. I come from the sea. Yeah, One yeah. if by land, two if by sea. And you didn't see the two coming. I did not see the and sea. And I showed up because you threatened me. And you know how I deal with threats. It wasn't a threat. It you, was an acknowledgement it was of you your area. You pointed at my settler and said, be a shame something happened to him. And then I loaded up. I'd be like, it'd be a shame. Uh, I said, what's he doing here? He's settling. Hence the name. And I figured that that settling was going to become aggressive at some point. It and was, I, it was I not. I ignored him. No, you threatened But then you him. came at me, guns, L- of, barrels of blazing. I have a hard red line. And you, <laughs> and start you know what? Talking. You built up all that stuff right there. And ready. you never moved them. You know why? Because I'm not violent. <laughs> I'm peaceful. I But I rolled up. When somebody starts like talking trash, got, I rolled up. I feel like you got a little too... No. I rolled up. That had the biggest city on the map. Uh, you did. I did. But then you didn't expand and then from there. You I just left everybody I there. Did, I was peaceful. You were in pure defense mode. I was trying to make And I, me being aggressive. And this is what you have said in previous games, almost of every other game we play of this style. What's that? Being aggressive pays off. It does. And you what You happened? weren't aggressive enough. And what happened to I you? I was aggressive. There you go. And I won. And see? I, I really do think that's a feature of most of these games. What you're saying is I'm right. You are correct in this discussion, yes. Right. Like Civ, what the 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 Civ game we played? That's the Civilization. Mm-hmm. There's another game. Civilization. That no, one. there's another game. But yeah, anyway, it's just most of these style of games. If you are the aggressor, usually it pays off. Rurik. Rurik. If you're an aggressor, usually it pays off. Either way, this game taught me something. When did it teach, teach you? you? Look at there. I. You set them up. We'll knock them down for you. I don't like civilization games. Really? It took me a while to realize that. Like, I don't... I like, I like fighting games 
a lot. Yeah. Like it a lot. I like a lot. I watched Dumb and Dumber just Friday. I like it. It holds up. It does. He's like, I like it a, a lot. lot. Uh, but it's the, I'd rather either have a game, and this is going to be odd. I like a game where either there's no fighting, where it is like kind of like Nations or Through the Ages type game, where you're mm-hmm. just kind of building, and there is just a small, minor war mechanic, or it is just a bloodbath, like that 18, 886 Vikings or something of that nature, where it's off, bear, where, where something where you're just, you obviously you're out fighting this person. Mm-hmm. The Civ game is too much of a variety. And as you do know, I don't multitask very well. I will say this. This has so far been my favorite Civ game. This is the only Civ... I'm, sad thing is we're going to have to play that Civilization New Dawn. That Mosaic. Civ I haven't played Mosaic yet. We, we looked we at it. And I don't think we played Civil... We played it one time. Did and we? it has that Civilization mechanic. Civilization Dawn. Yeah. You literally said during the game, this reminds me of Civilization. But he was talking about the video game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because he's, oh, he's a millennial. Yeah. Or what are you, a Zen... We Zen, played Zen, Civilization Zen, and New yeah, Dawn Zen together. Zen. Yeah, I know, but it's been so long. Okay. That This Clash of Cultures may very well cause me to sell Civilizations. And oh, yes. I'm going to have to play Mosaic. And I just... Glancing at it, that makes me look like... like for me, like, this might be... A good civilization game. For well, you. I like the fact this game, you get three actions on your turn. Three main actions. You get three main actions. You can repeat them if you want to, or you can separate them. Now, this one gets a little hairy in all the things you can do, but... Mm, this doesn't actually. One or two rounds. I don't know what you're talking I'm about. just saying, one or two rounds, and you know what exactly you can do. Right. You can advance your technologies. Congratulations on the rule book. I, I, oh, I think you, El Grogan I, did I the rule book. Joe Rogan? <laughs> Wow. Wow. Not Joe Rogan. Seth? No, Gro- uh, Grogan. Grogan. Gro- Grogan. The dude, the video game, Paul Grogan. Grogan. Paul. Thank it. Yeah, that guy. Board gaming rules. Something like I think that. he did the rule book. I think I was looking at it. Okay. I think so. He don't do quote, don't job. quote me. I never that. do. But if so you do quote in me. these three actions, you can move. You can uh, you can settle. You can rebuild your cultures. You can do, like, there's like a list of six different things you can do as an actor. It had a player yeah, aid. I, feel I like know how you love aids. a player aid. Love player aids. The player aid on this game, fantastic. Because I feel like this it game is. can be one of two ways. Either you can build up armies and just go attack the, the other players physically, or you can build up your religion. And just start converting everyone to your religion. Hence the culture. Well, her, that was, okay, one thing I will say. Culture had little to do with the game. Yeah, we but, but, but neither uh, none of us did in culture. Yeah, that's, well, that's what I'm saying. Because literally, that's we, what I just said. Well, I know, but no, no, you, no, no we, you said culture had little to do with the game. No, I said we culture chose... had little to do with the game we played. No, you didn't. Oh, well, didn't too. you didn't say we played. Well, I can stop this down right now. You didn't say we played. It. I feel like I said that it had it little did. to do with the game it we did. played. Yeah, I cut you off before you got to say <laughs> it. So thus, I'm right. Culture had little to do with the game we yeah, played. But, the game we yeah, played. But, the game we yeah, played. But, this is called Clash of Cultures, and there is an aspect of this game where you can culturize be so many spaces away from someone else's city and just influence their culture. We never did that. I move. used to make cultures. So when I was in college, I took a microbiology class, and this lady who that's just like not washing your clothes. No, no, no. This lady who, she was a doctor and she was a microbiologist and she needed a lab assistant. And I desperately needed an A. She's like, your toilet is full of culture. So, you know, her name, kid you not, was Dr. Seuss. S-O-O-S. And she had just come back from sabbatical, which is a fancy word for vacation that yeah, some people use. I don't know why they say sabbatical. Don't, it don't sounds like mean. a Star Wars card game. Well, I feel she, like a Space Biff's been on a long sabbatical. That's what he always says. She got tick fever or something like that and was gone for like 18 months. She comes back and then she says, I need a lab assistant. And I was taking the class. I needed this class to get through it. I said, okay, I'll, I'll be your lab assistant. And she says, I need somebody to make cultures for me. The little Petri dishes with the nutrient auger is what they call it. So you had to basically boil up this stuff and then you poured the liquid in there and then they solidifies into this gel. And then you put this little cellophane wrap thing around the top of them so that they're sterile. Mm-hmm. It was you could burn yourself very easily. And I ran the autoclave, which is the big machine that sterilizes things. You put stuff in it and it turns it on and it heats everything up. Anyways, so 
I took one of those cultures. And she was always saying about how, hey, you just leave these out in certain places and catch all types of bacteria. So just put it on top of your refrigerator and leave it open for a day or so mm-hmm. and put the top on it and just see what comes up because the bacteria gets in it and just goes crazy. Disgusting. Disgusting. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. So anyways, I'm making these cultures and I give one to another student. And this dude goes home, puts up like a piece of apple or something in it. And he ends up growing a fungus. So as you well know, funguses are bad. <laughs> And they spore, they go places, and you don't dare open them in a sterile environment. Mm -hmm. So here we are in a lab, and people are all putting this stuff underneath their stethoscopes. And here comes this dude with this little, you know, Petri dish. And he's going on, ah, I stuck an apple in here. And she yells from across the room, don't open that. And it has this mold looking thing on it. And I took it, and in a panic, like threw it into the autoclave and killed it. Killed it. I'm pretty sure. What I'm trying to say is I, I prevented the apocalypse. So the there's apocalypse. Yeah, the apple. <laughs> so it's like these people on these shows that mess up, and there's always mm-hmm. that one guy. Kind of like you've heard my theory about the fat people in all the Jurassic Park movies right. that always let the dinosaurs out, mm-hmm. which is why all the Jurassic Park's fat phobic, and we're against that. Yeah, sure. Anyways, that there's always that one person that just messes up that could have been there, but I stopped it. And I'm just saying, I am a hero. <laughs> Yet again, I you're literally, a hero. I am a hero. The, apple the world. Yeah. If I had let that apple, people would have been, yes. So that could have happened. The world could have come to an end. But thankfully, I was there, and that's my. That was how I clashed with cultures. And what I'm trying to say is, I've clashed with cultures in real life. I, I remember in school taking a, a similar class, or a zoology class, zoology. and we swabbed the teacher's seat and grew a culture off of that. And it was it was pretty bad. We were like swabbing stuff and oh, put it in a petri oh, dish. Oh, her seat. Her seat. Not her posterior. Her chair. Let me, let me okay. rephrase. I was her I chair. was wondering. I was wondering. We didn't swab her posterior. We have like, other what? We have other people. We swabbed her chair. English and I swab. Swab. Get that man with you. Bring it over here. Put it in the petri dish. Either way, I really enjoyed Clash of Culture. Enrique, do your thing. Do you like it? I loved. It. You loved it. I loved it. Like I play it inefficiently, as you said. Yes, you but did. I would like to play it again. To okay. See if I can. That's high praise. Like I said, I don't like four X games. I think this is probably going to be the only four X game that I have. That's interesting. Now. You call it a four X game. When I think of four X games, I generally think of like uh, the, the main one with the space lion on it, Twilight Imperium, Twilight Imperium. like the most popular game ever. So you explore in this. Yeah, you do. You, you flip expand. Over the tiles, you expand. You exploit the land you and exploit, you exterminate. Exterminate. Yeah, you're right. So yeah, so I am. Well, how many times have I been right this episode? A lot. You've been right a lot this episode. Does that make you feel better? Uh, I think we should. Board games. game snobs approved. What? Clash of Cultures. You f- I liked it. Enrique liked it. He, he said it's your favorite. He loved game. it. He said he loved it. You did say you loved it. He I said did. loved because I wanted to see if I can convert some. Culture is to my culture ne- next time. What is your culture? Don't worry about that, okay? All right. So, definitively, it's, Clash of Cultures. It's good. Board Game Snobs approved. You said that once already. For the second time. That's three times. We're about to sign- Approved. And that's going to do it for this episode. Thanks for listening, everybody. Thanks for all the people that are on our Patreon. We appreciate you very much. Because of you, I'm able to go to BGG Spring this very weekend. They're paying for your ride. They are. And for, I don't know, I, I'm going to take the card and say, hey, whatever you want, guys, it's on the patrons. What are you taking? Don't do that. We, gotta we got a, a card. We got to get a, we got to get a. Uh, it's going to pay for our bowling. Thank you, patrons. No, I done did the Groupon. Oh, that's right. So crazy. We're going to eat Chinese food too. I want to pay for our Chinese food. I do want to eat Chinese food though. Done and done. Because I love Chinese. I can eat all the rice. You are as much rice as I can. Leave us a review. Five stars on Apple. Leave us a review. Spotify. Send us an email if you have any questions about anything we've been talking about. Please don't. Until next time, I'm Gabby. This is Jerry. This is Thank you for tolerating this episode of the Board Game Snobs. Stay classy. Thank you.